<laughs> Welcome to Cardboard Box Games. I'm Adam. I'm Adam. I'm Andrew. Today we're going to be talking about Brodnar. But before we jump over to our intros, I want to say if you've been watching our videos on YouTube or on listening on our audio podcast, we'd love for you to subscribe and hit the like button. Hit the like button. It would mean the world to us. Without further ado, let's get started. And of course, we have to start off the week with Card of the Week. Card of the Week. Yes. So why don't we start over with you, Adam? You read off your Card of the Week and tell us why you chose it. So my card is called Champion's Challenge. It's a Bromnar card. It's an action card. And when you play it, you destroy each enemy creature except the most powerful enemy creature. And then you also destroy each friendly creature except the most powerful friendly creature. And then you have to ready and fight with your remaining creature. And then you have to fight. That's powerful. So basically, you destroy everyone's creatures except your strongest and the opponent's strongest creature. And then those two fight each other. And then whoever is the strongest survives. Uh, which is probably going to be the Bravnar creature. Which is probably yeah. going to be the Bravnar creature, For yes. Sure. Huh. Uh, I really like this card, because if you just start off with this card, you can just wipe the whole entire board, basically, and then you can place a bunch of Bravnar creatures down, do their actions with them. Uh, I picked it because someone played it against me one time, and it hurt me extremely since I was playing a Shadow, Dis, and Untamed deck, and they Ooh. don't have that many strong creatures. Yeah. And so basically all my creatures died... And they have special abilities with them too, and he just destroyed all my creatures. Yeah. Mm, okay. That that would go really well. The the other artifact with Brongnar. This artifact, if you destroy a, um, an enemy creature, you gain one amber, so you automatically just kill everything. And then your Brongnar creature can just attack. Yeah, and like kill him, and you gain just so much amber. Yeah, you would yeah. get a con if you had like one creature on the board and you played yeah. that card, and like it must be a rare, right? Because I've it never is had a rare, yes. Yeah. So, okay, mm. that's so cool. So, Andrew, I'm looking at your card, and you've actually picked one of the cards that aren't out yet, which is pretty exciting. It so is, this is yeah. a new card. Oh, it's not out yet. No, no it's this is not. not out. Yet, oh, so why don't? <laughs> but that's still something fun to talk about. Yeah. So. Okay. We talked about it in their earlier well, videos. Yeah. This this card is called Grump Buggy. Buggy, and it's an artifact. And your opponent, key, it, what it does is, you makes your um, your opponent's keys cost plus one for each friendly creature with power five or higher. And it's the other way around for you as well. So how many how many he has five power? That's how much keys, how much damage your key costs. So well. how many five power? So if you have like three five three five power creatures and their key costs plus three power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. If, plus three amber, yeah. And then if they have like two five power creatures and your key also costs plus two. Which yep. is really interesting. Okay. <laughs> but it does favor Brabnar again. It does. Yeah. Especially if you're playing against like a logo shadows disc deck. Mm-hmm. They may have some, but, but they're not gonna have a ton. Yeah. Exactly. So I I think it's kind of bad because this is Brabnar and Brabnar is mostly powerful with high numbers. And it depends on what deck you go against as well. Do you mean, like, do you think this card is bad? Yes. You do? Interesting. Huh. I'm well, actually a little bit excited to play this card. I don't too. know if it's bad. I, I, well, if you think about it, Bronnar has so many high creatures. You mean against it? Oh, sorry, my bad. I got you it. had it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I realize it's good now. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, the, the truth is, if you're playing against another Bronnar deck, you're, say you have a two, say you have like a Bronnar Sanctum, Deck versus a Brobner Sanctum deck, That's and all the creatures are big. Keys, yeah. cost. keys are going to cost ridiculous amount. Keys they cost are. fourteen. Ten. Yeah, fourteen. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, this game's be long. <laughs> I guess we need like a board the amber to forge all three of my keys. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. and also Sanctum captures as well, so it's going to take even longer. So my card of the week is an action in Brabnar, and it's got one raw amber, which I, I value that really highly. Because the cards that give you one raw amber, I think, are super important. Um, yeah. And Brabnar, yeah. uh, in particular, I think, because they don't have a lot of raw amber cards. They don't, no. Based on, yeah. like, how it feels, anyway. Uh, I never ran the numbers, but... For Brabnar. Um, this, this card is called Smith, and like I said, it's an action. When you play it... 
So you've gained an amber from the raw amber, but when you the playability is gain two amber if you control more creatures than your opponent. That's powerful. So what I love about this, and I have opened a deck recently has two of these. You have a potential of getting six, six amber if you play both of those on the same turn, and you happen to have more creatures. That's powerful. Worst case scenario, you just get two amber, and two amber for two cards. That's pretty good. I mean. This is a card that is really interesting to me if you can get a very heavy Brobnar board. Like a very heavy uh, Brobnar deck. Does your deck have a, a lot of Brobnar in it? No, unfortunately that one didn't have a lot of uh, creatures in it. That's thing. So, but it got me to thinking, like, that card could be pretty awesome. It so could be That's pretty why great. I picked that as my card of the week. Is one that I very rarely played. I think it's uncommon, actually. But oh. I still think it would be fun to play and try it out. And it seems powerful. Gaining three amber with a single card seems ridiculously it powerful. It is pretty powerful. And not many Brahmar cards actually help you gain amber. No. That I can think of. Which is what we're going to talk about today quite a bit. It's like, are we playing Brahmar the right way? It's going to be interesting to find out from all of you. Yeah. Um, so let's start with the first question that I wanted to ask is, when you open a Brahmar deck, what is it you're hoping to see in that Brahmar deck? For me, I like to find a bunch of synergies with the deck. I like finding a uh, Ganger Chieftain, I believe. We play it ready and fight with the friendly he's creature. He's like one of my favorite creatures. Yeah, he's pretty awesome. I also like controlling Brahmar creatures. Mm. Uh, I forgot his name, but when you play it, if your opponent has seven or more amber, they lose two. That's Lomor, Lomir Flame Fist. I, yes. There's something like yeah. that, yeah. It's powerful. I love uh, cards that can lower opponent's amber and it makes them like lose amber not you stealing it or anyone stealing just it just it. you just, just lose, lose it, it yeah. yeah i really like that mm. what about you andrew what do you look for in a brown well, i look for um strong brown cards that have perfect artifacts that go with it like um the chest by the way and like the, the war chest yep. yeah the war chest and also the card that readies every creature to fight as well like i'm looking for those types of decks because brown is like Mostly for getting, like, for destroying your opponent's board, pretty much. Yeah, I'm, like for reaping. I'm right there with you guys. Like, I love opening a Brabnar deck. First off, that has heavy creatures. Yes. Because yes. I feel like I've opened some that's got three creatures, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not playing it. But, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. But I, I feel like it needs to be heavy creatures. For sure. Goblin Chieftain, to me, is amazing. And if you can get a deck with two of those, or, and even three of those... It's fantastic. The Gauntlet of Command that you're talking about, where you can ready a creature and then fight with it, it's also mm -hmm. super powerful. Um, grenade Snib is really good. Little Mirror Flame Fist. Uh, the, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. I really like um, Loot the Bodies. Loot the Bodies with Coward's End is kind exactly. of fun. Exactly, yeah. I've had that uh, work quite well. Uh, the Burn the Stockpiles is a card that I always love to see in my Brabnar. As well, which is like if your opponent has seven or more ambers in action, they just lose four. Wow. Yeah, I wild. love burning the stockpile. But it also is scary when you're playing against a, a Brobnar deck, deck and you don't know what's in it. And you're like, all right, if I go to seven amber, I'm probably going to get burned the stockpile. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really tough. Um, but really what I look for is creatures more than anything. Like I want a good creature base. I want War Drummer. I want... War Drummer is the one that returns your Brabnar creatures to your hand, and I want Gengar Chieftains, and I want cards that do That's something on play, and I want cards that do something when they fight. That would be a exactly. pretty powerful Brabnar deck. But remember, you can only have 12 Brabnar cards in a deck, so it's pretty impossible to get all those cards that you want. Yeah. But you can get, like, some of those cards. I've gotten some pretty good ones, though, that I just super love. Like, I've gotten, like, double, I think I even got a triple Gengar Chieftain, but the rest of the deck was bad. So, like, their Gengar Chieftain is incredibly powerful, in my opinion. The ability to house cheat where you can fight with cards that aren't in the house is just exactly. amazing. Powerful. And then um, if you combine that with War Drummer, like, you can just set up some really amazing, like, turns. And remember, like, if you... They have no creatures, and you ready and fight with a creature, it just stops it being ready, so then you could reap with it. Exactly. I really love that. All right, so the flip side of that question is, what do you guys, what cards don't you like in Brabnar? Um, I don't really have a card that I don't really like to see, um, but one card that I kind of dislike is uh, Kelphie Dragon. 
Khalifi Dragon. Khalifi Dragon. I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it. And um, Tireless Grog. So mm. Khalifi Dragon, you can only play it if you have more than seven amber. Yeah. But once you do play it... He's amazing. He's amazing. Like, when you fight and reap with him, you gain an amber, and you can also... Do five damage to any target. I believe that is it. Five I have it yeah. right here. Dang. Yeah, you can do... When you fight or reap, you gain an amber... Then you wow. can deal five damage to a creature. It's really awesome. Does it pay seven player? You yeah. just have to have seven. Seven, yeah. Oh, okay. So it always ends up hard because, again, with the Smith card, where you gain three amber, you <laughs> that could would maybe, be awesome. The problem that I've had with Khalifi Dragon is I always have it in my hand. I'm like, oh, I guess I gotta discard it because I'm just not gonna. That's how I am all the time. Yeah. And also with Tireless Grog. So with him, I, I kind of don't like him because he can only fight. And he Not cannot either. reap at all. No. Oh, and he, he belongs to the active house. So if you pick Logos, you can play him. You can fight him. With yeah. him. You can fight. But, yeah. So you he have to fight him. with him on your turn. You have to. He's and, if he's, and if he's the only creature, then you have to kill him. Yeah. Then he just dies. So, uh-huh. if he's, so turn one, you play him, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fun. And he's a seventh power creature. I mean, that's pretty good. You can probably kill like two, Maybe three two. creatures, yeah. depending on how strong they are. Yeah. But I just don't like a creature how he just can't reap at all, gain amber. He just can kill creatures. I yeah. mean, depending on how heavy their side is, yeah. depends on if I like the card to kill the creatures. But most likely, I probably just wouldn't like to play him at all i mean if he's in my hand i'd probably just throw him out there but you know what i mean but there have been times that i know that on the first turn you were like oh it'd be nice to play him but i can't <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so how about you andrew you got any cards that you don't like seeing um well i'm not really good with names for cards yeah but there are some cards that i do not dislike that i dislike about barnar but like I just look for strong cards with Bronn, not like weak, and that's pretty much it. And cards like active, like makes your guys more powerful as well. Like those shield plus five power on some creatures as well. Oh yeah, the um, Titans. Up- I forget what it's called. That upgrade, the Blood of the Titans or something. Blood of the yeah. Titans yeah. plus five power. Powerful. I like yeah. that one. I like that one too. That's a fun one. So it seems like there's barely any cards we dislike from Brobnar. Yeah. Honestly, there isn't many that I dislike from Brobnar. And yeah. I, to me, it's all about the synergy. Khalifi Dragon was the one that came to mind for me. And honestly, I love the card. I love Dragon. I do, but if you don't have some neighbors, you, just, ne- you can never wait. play it. Yeah. <laughs> because like a lot of times, a lot of times you get to seven amber. You're going to pass the turn to your, you know, say you're called Logos or something. Yeah. You pass the turn. You're either going to forge a key or they're going to take all your amber. Like, you just <laughs> never start with that much. And Brobnar doesn't have a significant way to, like, gain a ton of amber to be able to do that. Well, it, it depends doesn't. on what the Brobnar is with. If it's, like, with Shadow or Death, then it's But, I mean, awful. he's talking about on their turn, like, getting up to seven amber and being able to play him. It's sometimes hard. Is, yeah. I mean, it happens. It's not like it never happens, but yeah. it definitely definitely is hard. But if you if you have, like, five Bronar creatures on the board, you can just creep with all five of them, and then you get, like, to seven amber. That's the trick like, with that, that card. And yeah. you need, like, a big creature base to go along with it. Or um, Smith, like, a couple Smiths. With a good creatures on the board. With good creatures. Yeah. So... That brings me back to my next uh, point, which is when I first started playing Brobnar, I was just fighting. And I've played so many games that I think I've lost because I went with that strategy. Brobnar can dominate the board. It can keep their creatures off. Um, A five-power creature can sometimes kill two of their cards. And when you think about it in terms of, like, other card games, you feel like card advantage is, like, two-for-one-ing. Exactly. With Keyforge, it's different. So I've landed on... You might kill one creature with your Bobnar, but really you should look at every one of your Bobnar creatures as amber generators. Yeah. Of reaping. What do you guys think? It sounds like you might agree, Andrew. I agree for sure. Because what if your opponent has like no creatures really, so you can't even really attack? Because there's lots of decks where like um, I did this Bobnar deck once on Crucible. It was a sealed thing, and I had so many creatures. But I'm like, I used to be like attack, attack. Yeah, but then I was like, why don't I just reap? <laughs> yep. Yeah, so I think reap will work with the deck for sure. I, I, 
think, I mean, I agree with you, and I did the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I have one more point, but I want to let you talk first, Adam. Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, for me, I just like looking at my Brummer creatures as an answer to destroy their creatures. Uh, I don't think of them as amber generators, because usually they have fight abilities to gain amber or to capture. What, no, that's the same sure. creatures, I mean. Yeah. But... Um, you get what I'm saying. Like they have a bunch yeah. of play abilities and fight abilities, so I keep thinking of them as like synergies to kill their creatures. So I think it's just going to be kind of hard for me to make them produce amber unless they have no creatures for me to actually fight against. I think this yeah. is where the debate comes in because um, when you're looking at a board, there are times that you just absolutely have to fight with Brownmire. Yeah. In particular, there are cards that you just have to deal with. Hunting Witch, sure. Succubus, yeah. Witch of the Eye. Like, there are cards that you just can't let sit on the board. And that, like, Brownmire is great at picking those guys off. Like, that's 100% what should happen. Yeah. Um, but I think there are situations where if your cards are bigger than your opponent's and you have four Brownmire creatures out and you just reap four times and gain four Amber... Your opponent's going to be like, oh, i got to figure out a way to take care of this. So you switch the pressure to making them, instead of you trying to control the board, you make them have to deal with your big creatures. Which is hard to do because they're strong. Because they're bigger. Yeah. And they might have to like waste resources or make plays to stop you. Yeah, it's not always the right thing. But I think, yeah. I think reaping with Brabnar is super, super good. And I didn't see it that way when I first started playing. So the reason I don't like reaping, because usually when I do have a lot of problem with creatures, I start reaping. That's when the opponent plays a bunch of creatures down, and then I keep reaping and reaping. And eventually they have so many creatures down, and they can like call one house, any one of their houses, and they can reap and get enough amber to forge key well, right away. that takes a while for them to get to. Though. I mean, when I'm reaping, I'm just like, okay, I don't care about your creatures, just reap. Oh, next turn. Okay, Quartz Key, Reap again. It depends on the deck. I don't think you should call Brabnar. It depends on the deck, for sure. Yes. Yeah. I don't think you should call Brabnar to just Reap unless you can do other things with it, in my opinion. So I think there's a balance. So I think what you're talking about is like, say you've got no Brabnar cards in your hand. Yeah. And you have four Brabnar creatures. Do you call Brabnar or do you call a different house? To me, I'd look at the game state. Yeah. If the, I'm ahead on the board. And I'm about to get six amber to put pressure on them. Just reap. Then I would just reap. Mm-hmm. If You're I'm getting, high. if I'm like even on the board, and I have stuff in my hand that puts pressure on them to build out my stuff, I would play my cards and I would build up for a future Brodnar turn to reap. That's mm-hmm. the way I look at it. And also, if you're behind, just try to empty your deck fast enough so then you get to for your deck and get better cards. I mean, it is true. Like one way to come back from being behind is just play as many cards as possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially if you know you have an answer coming up. So, mm-hmm. like, there's some hope. I think it is an interesting predicament, though, to, to get put into it. And I fell in the predicament that you're talking about, where I fell in both sides, where it's like, I have these amazing, whatever house, Brabner, let's say, and I can keep doing this stuff and taking care of them, and I'm gaining two or three amber because I'm killing all their stuff and reaping, but I'm not playing any other additional cards. And I've been up, like, two keys before. And then he lost. And I lost because they've been, like, pumping out so much stuff that I'm focusing on killing their stuff versus optimizing my amber generation. Yeah. Where they've now switched over to anything I put out is going to die. So I'm optimizing playing as many cards as possible. And I'm like, I cannot believe I lost that game. It blows, you know, it blows my mind. But, yeah. So it, it really is, like thinking about where you're, you want to be two to three turns from now. And I don't think it's right to just call Brabnar just because you have four creatures on the board. Yeah. With the caveat that there are times that that is right. Because just putting your... Say, for example, your, your opponent um, did a diss turn. Mm-hmm. All right, and he has Lash of Broken Dreams. Oh, okay. And maybe you have one Brabnar card in your hand and you have a good Brabnar board. You can gain enough amber to Fortune force three. your opponent to have to play a this house. again. Oh, this because again. they have Lash Broken Dreams. Yeah. Knowing that they don't have any more discards, most likely in their hand. Which would hurt them. Which it slows them, them down. Yeah. And it allows you to be like, okay, so I'm going to gain four amber this turn, and I'm going to kill your creatures that you brought out. I'm going to play my one Brabnar card, 
Now, you either have an answer in another house, but you probably don't, or I know you're going to have to call this. So you're going to be in a position where you're in a losing battle. Because eventually, if you can't play more disc creatures and dump your hand a lot more, all you're doing is buying a turn. So I love like positioning the game with Broadmoor so your opponents have to do something. Mm-hmm. Or in the game in general, they have to do something that is suboptimal. And I really pay attention to stuff like that. So like when a person plays this on me, and they have Lash of Broken Dreams, my goal is to get them to the point where they have to play this again that next turn to stop me. Mm-hmm. Because the goal, is, my thinking is, they most likely don't have good disc creatures to start with. Also, the- what you can do with Broadnar, you can reap with everything, and then if you get the card that ready and fights with every creature on the board, then you can just take out the board, and the leftover creatures you can just reap and gain so much damage as well. Is there a card that readies every creature? Yes. There is. It's like... Follow the leader, that's what it's called. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't it, ready them, though. It just allows you to fight with all of yeah, them. Yeah, but if you, every creature is dead, then you can just have to reap. But I don't think follow the leader readies them. It, it does. does not it does? ready them. It does. No, I'm pretty, we'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure follow the leader just allows you to fight with all your creatures on your turn. Mm. Exactly. That's so that means, like, it? it doesn't ready them. If it ready them, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. That would be overpowered. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like, reap, 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 reap. All right, follow the leader. Kill all your stuff. Reap, 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 reap. What yeah. <laughs> That was power. Yeah. But follow the leader, yeah, it doesn't ready. And that is one of the interesting things. Readying a creature is super powerful. And Brobnar does have ways to do that. It does. Which I think is incredible. Um, that Gauntlet of Command, it's one of my favorite artifacts. And I keep saying that I know many times. Because it allows you to literally, on a Brobnar turn use a Sanctum card or use a Logos card to do something, which I just think is super cool. And Logos is mostly just archiving cards, right? So. Well, you think about it like Quixo the Explorer. One of my favorite cards to use Gauntlet of Command on is Quixo. Mm-hmm. So ready Rob, I call fight. Brobner, ready and fight with my Quixo draw card. And he's Skirmish too, so we can't Skirmish take so he doesn't die. And yeah. when he fights, draw a card. And, Bra- and he, there's also Bat Drone. That yeah, that was awesome. That room is awesome. You fight, you steal one. And he has skirmish too, so it's like, boop. Amazing combinations of the Gauntlet of Command. So what type yeah. of decks do you think are good against Bromnar? Um, Sanctum. No, like um, deck combinations, like uh, very controlling decks, highly um, are good, good amber control. So you're, you're asking like what decks or what houses with are good with Brabner, like in the same deck? Against okay. Brabner. Oh, oh, okay, gotcha. Probably decks that can easily take out the board, like Dix and Shadow. Well, not... Board wipe decks? Yeah, Dix is really board wipey. With Gate of Dix, Key of Dix, Three Fates, all those powerful cards. Like it Three Fates is pretty good against Brobnar. And the game over for playing, which is even more better. Three Fates is a good card. Um, Alright, so thinking about that, anytime that I've played a Brobnar deck, there are... I like to think about it in classifications. Like, I don't know if it's in particular houses, but I would say Shadow in general is pretty good against Brobnar, in particular because a lot of their stuff is elusive. True. And if brought in their creatures are just annoying, so they can do stuff. So you need like yeah. to use two of your Brobnar creatures to kill them, which is really painful. That is true. Um, but I also think Brobnar really struggles with a deck against a deck that generates a ton of amber. Because they can't stop. They can't. Anything. They can make you lose at most four. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah. say someone gained fifteen amber, you can't stop them. Mm-hmm. You can't. You can't make their keys cost more. Uh, you can with that one card, yeah, actually. Iron Obelisk. Iron Obelisk, yeah. But that requires you to have creatures out. But that has saved me a few times. It has saved me, too. Um, so, yeah, in my mind, it's like deck against decks that gain a ton of amber and against elusive creatures. Those are the two that I think are the hardest, potentially. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. What do you guys think? Elusive is powerful, for sure. I think I have to agree with you, because... Um, yeah. Whenever I'm playing Bromnar, I usually lose against them gaining tons of amber, and also... And you can't do anything. And when they have elusive creatures, I'd have to waste two creatures just to kill one of theirs. It's, that's, Unless that's, you get lucky and have like a punch or whatever that card is that does three damage. Yeah, Everyone's, that's punch. Yeah. That's why I, I kind of think Sanctum is better than Bromnar, because Sanctum, can, like, you can actually capture your opponent's amber. It's... Um, but Brian, all you can do is attack and kill their creatures. With Sanctum, you can attack and capture Amber as well. And they have shield. 
Well, that's why I, I think like, it's debatable. I feel like Sanctum's not that good. I mean, the capture's good, but they can get it back. Losing the Amber is way more powerful, in my opinion, because mm -hmm. it's just gone. You, the enemy can't get it back. But there's not that many Brawn creatures that makes you lose the Amber. Yeah, there's only a couple that I can think of. There's only like two or three that I can think of. Yeah, no, I'm just saying I feel like Capture is weaker than Oh, yeah, Capture is definitely weak, weaker than Lost. But there is Doorstep to Heaven. I love that card. That's powerful. Which is in Sanctum. So when if you, each player, if they have six or more Amber, they lose down to five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for the the condition where decks gain 14, it's like, nope, you lose nine Amber, you're down to five. Didn't you gain like 50 Amber on Crucible once? Yeah. It's like... Gateway to heaven. Woo. Doorstep to heaven. Oh, Doorstep to heaven, sorry. Actually, speaking of that, I figured out something on Crucible. It doesn't seem to re limit you to the number of times you can play an individual card. Mm -hmm. So, like, I can only play Phase Shift six times in a turn. Six times. And Crucible let me play it way more than that. Really? So I, I found, I started digging in to verify that that was actually a rule after I started doing that. So I apologize to anyone that I beat on Crucible by playing Phase Shift that many times. <laughs> um, I do not do that anymore. So, like, on Crucible, I try to follow the rule and keep track of, like, how many times I'm playing each card. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming one day that'll get fixed, and maybe it's already fixed, but it definitely wasn't. The so, one it is in the rules where you can only play six times? You can only play a, a card with the same name six times in a turn. Interesting. So, infinite decks don't really... So, there's really no infinite decks? No, I can still be infinite. It's not infinite. I can still forge all three keys in one turn. Okay. I just have to maneuver differently. I can't just do the combo I was doing. I just have to play other cards too now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like Wild Wormhole. I have to play Wild Wormhole six times. And then I play... Um, what is that other card? Twin Bolt Emission. I have to play like other cards to generate me Amber versus just phase shift into that, into that card that gives me three. So, so I can still get three, um, three keys in a turn. There was a deck in the Schomburg, Illinois Vault Tour yeah. that had uh, somebody, uh, Wasi, did uh, some uh, commentate, commentated, commentated that finals, and the guy had a Nepenthe Seed Library Access deck, and then after winning, like dominated because he just drew so many cards, yeah. but he couldn't forge. Yeah. So you add that to the deck I've got where you can forge, that becomes mm -hmm. crazy. Um, then they switch decks. Wow. So, like, they play, and then it's an adaptive format. So, like, you and I would play, and then we switch decks. And that deck won both games. And then for the third round, you bid chains on which deck you want to play. And I, in my mind, I would have wanted to bid a ton of chains on that deck because it was clearly the most powerful. Mm -hmm. But the, the guy that didn't own the deck bid zero chains on it. And that doesn't make sense to me. And he lost to that, that combo where the guy just drew and gained a ton of amber. Why would he do that? I, I would love to like understand that decision too, or maybe I misunderstood how that format what worked. Big chains. So let's take a say we got a deck that we both want to play. I'll be like, all right, I'll bid five chains. You're like, nope, I'm putting seven chains. I'll be like, all right, I'll go eight chains. You're like, uh, I'll go nine chains, and then you start with that many chains on the deck. Oh. And then I'm like, I, I don't want to do it for nine chains. You're you're gonna have it for nine chains. Then you play it and you just start with nine chains against. So only one player starts mm -hmm. with chains, or both of them. Only one. It's who it, you bid on the deck that you want. To have chains. Yeah. So, so basically, it's just like using dollars. Is that what's going to happen in Atlanta? Um, I don't know. I haven't been able to see. You know what? We should dig into that a little bit more to see what the format is. Yeah. Be it, interesting. I want to say it was a sealed tournament they were going to do where you get three decks and you have to play with each deck until you're eliminated or something. Oh, we had you sealed? Interesting. That's, I think oh, that's for one done. of them. I, don't, I, know that, I know there's Archon events there, too. Okay. But I know that I read somewhere where you buy, like, you get three sealed decks, and then you play until each one of them loses. Do we get to keep the deck? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. You always keep the sealed deck. Oh, and also, um, we're going to a tournament later today. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I hope people show up. It's an Archon yeah. tournament, right? Yeah. Yeah, that tournament had five people. No, the so, last tournament we had eight people. Oh, okay. That One of Dad's friends came, and some of the other people we saw before came. So I'm guessing this time, this about, there's going to be about five, I'm guessing. I hope there's more than that. So, yeah. base, so <laughs> one turn kill deck or my normal deck? One kill turn deck. Let's see how that goes. Should we all purposely do Brogmar just because of like, 
this video and stuff? Nah, we don't have to, right? Well, my deck doesn't have Robiner in it. Neither one of mine does. None of mine do either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could just pick a random deck back here that has Bromnar. Yeah, but... they just go there like, hey guys, I brought Bromnar and see how good this deck is. So you guys think I should play one turn kill? Well, you would want me to beat you with the one turn kill deck? I can, I know how to stop you. I, I know how to stop you now. My deck has um, controlling cards that can stop your artifacts. So yeah. all I have to do is position my Nexus where you can't kill Nexus, but where I can play... Use him yeah. next turn. I really hope I don't go against you. <laughs> we, I was the first. I, um, me and Dad were battling, and he used his infinite on me. This was the first time he figured it out. And I, he was like, I was so excited to gain three amber, and while he was like going infinite and gaining three keys, <laughs> so I was like, I'm done. Yeah, he's like, I'm done. I quit. <laughs> I'm like, but wait, I want to finish this. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it is very important though for me when I play that deck. It's incredibly challenging to watch out for cards like Nexus and Snefflith. When do you play it? Like you don't want to hold on to Nepenthe Seed forever, but yeah, yes, you... we're getting off topic here. This is for Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, yes, it's yeah. fun to talk about other stuff too. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, I guess overall, like from the very beginning, there's a lot of people that didn't like Brabnar, mm -hmm. like a lot really? of the things that I've. But I actually have found that I really, really. We got an alarm going off here. My bad. Oh, we have to go to the gym soon. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get going here in a second. But anyway, the from the very beginning, I've always liked Brobnar. And I love the synergies that Brobnar creatures have with each other. So, I mean, I guess that's kind of my final point. I Maybe my parting thought would be, like, look for opportunities to reap more versus fighting. And I think that'll change... How good Brobnar is in your mind? There's probably gonna be. This is gonna probably be a debate though, because some people want to fight, some people want to read, and it's gonna be hard to tell. I think you have to use your best judgment on it, and like you should always be thinking about um, how can I put my opponent on the back foot, and the way to do that mm -hmm. is to gain enough amber so that you're about to forge a key. Yeah. That that's the way that Brobnar does that, and especially if you have like burn the stockpile and things like that too. Oh. Yeah. Um, you can also put pressure back on them by like making them lose amber and mm -hmm. playing your creatures that make them lose an amber. Like, there's some pretty cool combinations. There's lots of cool combinations. Yeah. Uh, I hope you guys liked our videos. Uh, in the comments, tell us what you want to hear from us. Uh, we're thinking about doing a Sanctum versus Bromnar video to see which deck, which house is better. And we might do multiplayer to show you like to teach you guys how do we do multiplayer, and it's pretty interesting, it's pretty fun. I love multiplayer. Multiplayer is pretty fun. Yeah. We, every once in a while we run into a card where it's like, well, I guess we'll handle it this way. And then we just decide, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it works. But I think we got it mostly figured out now, but yeah. it'd be fun yeah. to, to sure. do a game on that. It's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it is. Give a like and subscribe, and keep gaming. Yep, bye, yeah, see bye you. Guys.